Hi everyone, I'm Linda Marie Cologne, your host for Making It Artisan Stories. And I have a special guest today who is focused on sustainable products. And this is Tim Sway from Tim Sway Perspectives Hi. here in Wallingford. Welcome. Hi. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Yes, thanks for joining us. We can start on your journey. From what I understand, you were a furniture maker turned guitar maker turned <laughs> everything. Yeah. Take me back. <laughs> I'm sort of I'm sort of one of those people that's uh, if I if I do something for too long I get a little bored I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was um, I was a musician most of my life. That's what I I grew up as a musician, and I, I still consider myself one to some extent, even though I don't really play anymore. Mm -hmm. What but types of instruments? I played the bass primarily. I played guitar as well, but I played the bass on uh, the big stand-up bass, and uh, I, you know I did that for a living, like five six days a week for a long time. But when you play the stand-up bass for a living, that means that you're usually broke. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, so I never had money to, to buy nice things. And um, I would pick up furniture off the side of the road and fix it up and paint it or, you know, this and that. And, mm -hmm. and it, as I, I kept doing that, I, I started finding myself enjoying my time in the garage more than I was enjoying my time playing music. Mm -hmm. And then I, I started getting a little better at it where people would like look at the stuff that I was like, oh, it's this old junk that I found on the side of the road. I put it together and I made this. And people were like, wow, I would buy that. So kind of reclaiming, like, repurposing. Right. And those are all the hip words now. Yeah. Like upcycling, refreshing, upcycle. Yeah. Reclaim, repurpose, you know, refurbish. Um, but then I was just basically being a poor broke musician. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to get back. Right. I started like an Etsy store and um, and I just started putting more and more energy into that and mm -hmm. less and less energy into finding gigs. And eventually I get to the point where I do this full time, where I, I make things, um, furniture, art. Um, home products. But there's that part of me that's still a musician, right? That still mm -hmm. has that connection. And, and really that whole journey of making things always in the back of my mind was like, I want to make like my own instruments. I want to make my own guitars. They're a little bit harder, and mm -hmm. a little bit more skill involved, a little more tooling involved. And uh, just recently I finally got to that point where after, I mean, I've made all sorts of wacky guitars. Like I was making them out of like water skis. I used to play, <laughs> I have a water ski. It's like a full tip to tail and it's got um, it's a bass, bass guitar. Oh wow! And I, I and mean, functional. I, yeah, fully functional. I made it. I played a couple hundred shows on it when I was still playing full time. And I used to drive. I wear like this orange life vest, and I just go out and play this water ski bass. Well, and, that's a conversation piece. It, yeah, <laughs> it was a great opener. It was cool as heck, and um, and it worked. Mm -hmm. And and then I, because I was trying to do this, like prove this point, like we don't need to, you know, deforest Africa to get all these like rare exotic woods to make our guitars. Like this water ski is fine. And, and then I made some other guitars out of, uh, this is actually one in the Wallingford Library I made out of the, um, the Hammond Asset Pier after it got wrecked. Yes. You know, and the, it's a fully functioning guitar. And, and so I, I've been putting more of my energy into that because it ties all my passions together, mm -hmm. you know, of, of creating and making sustainability and music. Um, so that's the direction. And that's a great combo. Where I am now. Yeah. So we can see some of your work at the Wallingford Library? Yeah, one of my guitars is there. Um, and, uh, it's been there for a, f a few years now. I actually just kind of went and I revamped it cause I've learned so much since I made that guitar. Mm -hmm. like, Is it all self-taught or do you have a mentor or how are you figuring out how to actually make these instruments work and they're not just art pieces? Um, I mean, a lot of it's trial and error there, mm -hmm. you know, it helps like that. I, because I've spent so much time around them. Like I know, you know, what they're supposed to look like and feel like, and, sure. uh, and I have my own personal you know, sort of interests and mm -hmm. things like some people like them this way and some people like them that. So I make them the way I like them for the most right. part. Right, and you know it works. Okay. Um, and but really, what I get excited about, and we can talk about it with some of the stuff that I brought, is I yeah. like to to push the envelope of materials mm -hmm. um, of what people consider uh, valueless or trash. And like when I started my business business mantra or whatever you call it, the mission statement was to yes. make, to make worthless things priceless. Like taking a water ski and turning it into a bass mm -hmm. guitar, like that's cool. But not everybody wants to play a water ski bass guitar. But if I can make a, a bass guitar it, with the same sort of out of the same type of stuff that's found in the landfill, that is something that people do want mm -hmm. and will play. Like now, I feel like I'm I'm really contributing. And my favorite part of that is that when you make instruments, you're making art that then goes on into another artist's hands and continues to make right. art. But like if you make art that hangs on a wall, it just hangs on a wall, mm -hmm. you know. But if you make a like if you make a paintbrush, then useful art. <laughs> exactly. And so that's like I really get into that of making things that mm -hmm. that will continue to live beyond my hands and continue to tell a story, mm -hmm. you know. And it looks like you've gone from basic creations to more intricate, and you've brought some today. So do you want to just go around the table and share with our viewers what have you made? Sure. Um, well, we, I mean, we can start with my my business card. Like these are. <laughs> So the business card in itself is usually a reflection of your company or your mission statement, 
And so what material is this made out of? Because this is not traditional cardstock. Right, you exactly get it. And and so when I started the business and I wanted to be able to advertise my business, I, you know, I'm on printcode.com or whatever, like looking for, and I was like, I can't do this. I don't. And so what I did is I had a local person uh, made me a stamp that has my name and phone number on okay, it. Okay, like a rubber stamp, yeah, traditional? Just, yeah, just a stamp. Make it, they, it's a simple machine you can plug into your computer, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so I had a stamp made. And I just started cutting up cereal boxes. And um, oh, that's what this is so from. Okay. That is actually a vinyl record. Uh, the sleeve. Yeah, this is from the the cardboard sleeve of a vinyl record. Oh, that's awesome. But so all that cardboard, like cereal boxes, like one of my favorite things. I use them for templates in the shop. I make stuff like that, mm -hmm. and like hang tags on my guitars are often made. Out. It's just like this simple material that everybody recycles. It has all these uses. Mm -hmm. If you have a school project and your kids and they need you know, a piece of cardstock. It's like, sometimes a cereal box is going to work just fine. It's a perfect size. It is. It's it's eight and a half by 11, just about. It I mean, really is. I can get nine business cards, I think, out of like your average cereal box. Okay. And um, it's not hard. And You're it's, onto something. So that stamp cost me about $15 mm -hmm. eight, nine years ago. And I've, I I mean, I must have made 5,000 cards with it by now. Wow. And it, and so it you just marry fine. it up with yeah. repurposed cardboard from cereal? Yeah. And you have cards. And you have free cards. That's awesome. Yeah. So... So. That's the tip of the day. Right. <laughs> That's a great um, DIY. Right. It's, it's little things like that. So that, like, you know, starting from right there, I try to make everything. Uh, my, my one buddy, uh, he always says that I follow the, the path of most resistance. <laughs> like, I make everything more difficult than it needs to be. But... Uh, that's kind of the the goal, like mm -hmm. to to see how far you can push it. Like, well, here's if you know we put the the card companies out of business and started saving the cereal boxes. Just think about what a difference that would make. If obviously not everybody, maybe like a high end lawyer is going to want to hand a a cereal box in to represent his business, but like other people that where it makes sense for them uh, to do that. There's like savings financially, the savings on the the environmental impact. Of course. It's, sort of carries on to the rest of my work. This is like a CNC experiment, which is a computer numeric cutter. Okay. Um, uh, it's a, basically a router on a, on a thing that it's like a robot and mm -hmm. you type in what you want it to do. So like our CNC machinists that are studying in trade school, go on to have careers, that's the same type of machinery that you're using at home? Yeah, I have a smaller like bench version. top size okay. version of that. It's the same technology. And I got, I got fascinated by the technology with, um, I didn't really want to learn it because it, I didn't want to deal with the computers, but then I was teaching my son Vance, whom you've met. <laughs> I have, and he's um, very impressive. I, yeah, thank you. I wanted him to be current in his. If I was teaching him how to use a hand plane, that's great. But it, he would, if he actually went on to make a living in the trades and he didn't mm -hmm. understand this technology, I would have been doing him a disservice. So right. I forced myself to learn, and then I got hooked, and now I'm like all in. So this is just, this is um, a cutoff. I mean, this is like a eight inch square piece of wood. It's some reclaimed barn wood that was left over from a dining table I made. So oh, wow. this would normally be something that would have ended up, you know, in the scrap pile. I was going to say, as scrap, and now you found a use for it. Exactly. So even the waste of the waste I'm trying to use. Um, I mean, I heat my shop with a lot of this stuff, too. So now I'm going to be colder one day, I guess. <laughs> but you but, can have lunch. But so it's a bowl, so it's functional. But then it's also, you can say, just put a little keyhole in the back so you can hang on the wall and it's art. Because oh, I like that. to... Multi-purpose. Right. I like to have that sort of thing. I go, you know, a little further in and with the CNC technology is, is great. And I came up with this silly idea a couple of years ago of the spork chilla. A spork chilla. Okay. And so it's, you're cooking, you need a spoon, you need a spatula, you need to just pick up the noodle to test it. And it's just like a... <laughs> Three in one. But it's made from an old dining table. Mm -hmm. Oh, so really? I picked up a dining table off the side of the road, and I cut like, you know, 12 of these out of a piece of the dining table. And, and, and now uh, you have reclaimed wood that serves as utensils. Right. Unfortunately, I don't have any examples of my furniture and whatnot here because it's big and it's all in other people's homes. So mm -hmm. I just have this like CNC stuff. It's not, I don't only do like this computer stuff, you know. Sure. Well, what's this? Because this <laughs> looks fun. <laughs> this, is... <laughs> this looks amazingly fun. So back when... I was still playing music for a living. Uh, we would uh, we would learn songs on the road on our way to a gig a lot. Like we would get a text like, "Hey, the the bride wants to hear this song." Mm -hmm. And so my my drummer Donnie and I we would commute together and we'd like pull the song up on the iPhone and and listen to it and just learn it, you know, talk it out. And one of them was a country song, and the lyrics were like just as the same lyrics as the last country song we learned in the car and the one before that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and we were like, what do they do? And it was my, I can't take care of my buddy Donnie, the, the drummer. He said, I think they just sit in a room and they just roll dice and, oh, okay. and, they, and write songs and they add these words. So I made up this set of country dice and they're all like the words like, like horse and whiskey and pickup truck. And so all the basic 
basic country vocabulary. Right. And the idea is you roll the dice three times, you write the words down, then you use those to write a song. And I have a bunch of oh, videos awesome. on my YouTube channel where I do it. And like, I have like, I wrote a song in 15 minutes mm -hmm. and I, there's a video of me doing it. And like, I just speed the film up and I got done. And I was like, you know what? I was like, if I put an hour into the song, it might be a really good song. Yeah. Polish so, it up. And... It's like a drinking game. These are all scraps. They're all scraps the, of wood. the cutoffs of like when you cut an inch off of the piece to make mm -hmm. it fit. And I just save all those scraps. And Wow. Yeah. So literally making something out of uh, nothing. If... The guitars. So tell us about, so you went from furniture and reclaimed pieces and from waste, you're making other things. And now you will work on commission. Yeah, I, I work on commission. I've been really, because uh, this is this is really where my, my, uh, my passion lies. It's really, like I said, like tying everything, mm -hmm. you know, together of music and art and all my interests. Uh, and I'm getting better at it. And, uh, and I think figuring out like where I can push the envelope on the mm -hmm. materials being used and reclaimed and where I can't. And, um, so I brought a couple examples of, uh, of some guitars that I've made in these, the process of experimentation. Yeah. So sh share um, with me and our viewers, cause this is really amazing. And these are functional and. F oh yeah. They're fully functional working guitars. Um, this, this one here is the oldest of the three it's a pretty generic guitar design it's my own body style but it's based on like some sort of classic guitars and it was an experiment in you know reclaimed wood and, and whatnot so the body is made of uh reclaimed ash which was from a shipping pallet and ash is a common wood that's mm -hmm. used in guitars yes um the silver part on it is a piece of reclaimed signage from there's a local sign shop in town and when they have a misprint or a mistake or something um I, I can take those from them. They give me these and I sand the graphics off and underneath it is this aluminum, this like polished aluminum. Oh, look. wow. So you're saving it from the landfill. Yep. You're taking it off their hands. And using it. The neck on this one is made from some reclaimed decking from one of my furniture customers. They ripped out their entire deck of, uh, and the deck was made of Brazilian Kumaru, which is called um, Brazilian mahogany sometimes. Okay, yes. Very ex nice, dense, Expensive. weather resistant. Yeah, expensive wood. <laughs> I threw it. I took so much of it home. I broke a shock in my truck. Oh wow! You know? <laughs> so I use that a lot. The fingerboard on this one is made from a schooner from 1895 called the Ernestina, and oh, it's wow. a wooden boat that's being restored up in Maine right now. And I have a friend that's on the job, and he brought me back some pieces of this boat. Oh wow, that's amazing. So that I mean, yeah. the wood's probably not that old, but it's seen more of the world than me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind it's of got cool. some mileage on it, and then the even like the nut is a little piece of corian that's a cut off from a sink, um, mm -hmm. sink cut out. So all um, reclaimed materials that would otherwise maybe go in a landfill. For the most part, um, you know, one of the things that I allow myself to do now is uh, when I really started doing this, I was trying to make literally every part, and mm -hmm. um, and the uh, some of the hardware is bought, like the oh, okay, the so you do make some allowances in the bridge. Now the guitar that's on your side yeah. is another uh, pallet guitar. So that's made out of all the little cutoffs of shipping pallets from some other pallet guitars that I made. If you could look at the back, you can see it's all little thin stripes of, of pallet wood, kind of like the dice. They're all the cutoff pieces of wood. I'm going to pick it up for our viewers. Yeah, sure. So this is an, ex I put all my favorite punk rock bands logos on the back of this. This is great. But these are all so detailed. stripes. And this is my, my favorite part right here is that I, I made a mistake and there was like a blowout. And so I patched a piece of the cutoffs I had of that, but I did it intentionally. Oh, wow. The wrong direction. I like that. Wow, this is beautiful. Um, and then if I spin it around, I see there's sure. a tag. So does every one of your creations get one of these made <laughs> responsibly? Because your shop is in Meriden, Connecticut, and right. you're a Wallingford resident. I live in Wallingford, my shop's in Meriden now, mm -hmm. yeah. New Perspectives yeah. Music, so that represents your guitar making. Mm -hmm. And then even, like I said, like some of the, I'm still buying some hardware and whatnot. On this particular guitar, I actually bought the neck. I didn't make that neck, so I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a friend now who's in, right across the border in New York, and he and I are making pickups. So I'm cutting out even the electronic pickup parts, the oh, green parts there. These green Those parts. are vinyl records. So, oh, these are vinyl records? Yeah, so we cut vinyl records up, and I send them to him, and he winds the pickup inside. So it's like every year I get to add another piece of my reclaimed like juju to the <laughs> oh absolutely uh, to the builds. Now this style is incredible, and you want to tell me a little bit about how this became your a major creation. This is my latest one. I'm super proud of. A big part of my mission is about finding uses for things that other people consider garbage. And sure. So nowadays, pallets, which like the other guitars are made of, a lot of people are mm -hmm. working with pallets. We've sort of like brought them back from the brink, so to speak. Of, right, uh, right. And there's actually value in them. And barn wood is very popular now in people. So I'm always looking for the, the next discarded waste. And one mm -hmm. of the things I thought about is that every time someone buys a house that was built in the 70s or 80s, the first thing they do is they throw away all those hollow core doors that are 
on their closets right. and their bedroom doors, and they put in new wood doors because they're garbage. Those doors, Nobody... and everyone wants a solid wood <clears throat> door, so those hollow cores. Yep. So they're they're gone. They're ugly. Wow. They're dated. So I thought, well, here's a source, and I've been experimenting with them for years, and this is my fourth or fifth guitar I've made out of them, but it's definitely my best one. I laser cut the every piece of this guitar is all cut on the laser, and it's all from hollow core door. The only things that are not from the door are the tuners, the strings, and the frets. But literally every other piece is from the hollow core door. So it's all this oh, eight okay. inch plywood. I, you see, I did like a curved. It's kind of hard to see. I like yes. actually made it so you could bend all this. And the neck is my favorite part. It's all. Oh wow! Get that on the camera. Um, yeah, that's it's beautiful. All hundreds of like layers of mm -hmm. of these uh, pieces of wood. So this was. Uh, I didn't know if it was going to work. And uh, it actually worked really well. <laughs> so, that is great. It's a totally functioning guitar, and I'm making more of these for sure because it was so much fun. For this holocord door, uh, wood glue has to stick to wood. It can't have finish on it. And so that was like the biggest bummer of this is I had to sand it enough to remove all the finish for the glue to stick. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and how uh, long does something like this take to create if someone were to commission you uh, or this took i think two million years <laughs> <laughs> but the next one will only take one million because so. okay. you get better every time and quicker exactly yeah it's, it's i didn't really count the i tend to be multi-projects so i have a lot of mm -hmm. projects going on at once but it took a long time just because of letting the glue dry between layers and um but yeah i'm, I'm hoping to make more of these i made a few mistakes on this that i know how to correct mm -hmm. the next one's going to be better wow so there's something to be said from that reclaimed material. And if and if like maybe there isn't a market for these doors, but the idea is to if people see stuff like this, maybe they'll think twice before they throw away that door. Right. That's the idea. Or they'll look for someone like me that they will use it mm -hmm. instead of just throwing it away. And so another thing I can put out there. If you're in Wallingford and you have any hollow core doors, Timsway.net, drop me a line. He's the one. I'm looking for more. <laughs> yeah. Keep them out of the landfill and just, you know, post them. Do you look on Craigslist or Facebook marketplace or I do is that all how that. you pick up your materials? Absolutely. I do all that sort of hunting. Okay. Um, and uh, lately I've been, I've been sort of staying, shying away from hunting because I've collected so much junk over the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, the Holocore doors, I'm like really like bent on wow, what a great, right now. What a great reuse. Video of artists playing your instrument. My main YouTube channel, which is YouTube dot com slash Tim Sway. I, I build a lot Tim of these. Sway. So there's a video of that being made. Mm -hmm. And I play them a lot um, to show that. That they truly work. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I'll use them to make the little soundtrack for the video. And then I have another YouTube channel, which is called New Perspectives Music, where I demo a lot of these. And I have a, a video series I've started, but I just haven't had enough time mm -hmm. where I, I have friends of mine that are kind of like this show almost. It's uh, friends of mine who are making a living as musicians. Yes. Because it's difficult. And so I have Absolutely. them come in and tell me about their how they make a living as a musician like mm -hmm. do a little interview and then I make them play my guitars oh well, that's great because <laughs> we all got to help each other out of you know? course yeah and it's a great network and a great community and you're mm. all drawn together through either music or the sustainability philosophy or uh just your artistry and carpentry I meet so many interesting people too that are all have their own like little spin on it mm -hmm. you know like I mean I have mine obviously and uh sure and then you'll meet someone and they're doing this and it's like Whoa, you know, and I love that we have that technology where we can connect like that, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's just continue to cyclically inspire each other. That's know? great. You know, so you're making instruments. Um, you're commissioned to do a variety of works, including uh, custom furniture. Yeah, yeah, I, I still do that. It's still you know part of the business. I'm just trying to transition to all guitars because that's what I want to do. But okay, so you're going to focus on a guitar line. But yeah, but if you need any furniture made. Call me. <laughs> and how can we reach you? You're on a variety of social media platforms besides YouTube? Um, yeah, um, uh, I have a website. My furniture website's timsway.net. And if you just Google Tim Sway, you'll find me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on custommade.com and Instagram and all those things mm -hmm. as well. Are you still on Etsy? Yeah, I am still on Etsy. Oh, good. Yeah, I have a small presence there. That's like this stuff here that I brought. That's the reason I have it is because it's things that I like kind of put in my Etsy store just because I like to continue to run that store and sure. have products mm -hmm. you know available so that's great so yeah. facebook twitter yeah. youtube yeah I'm and a website there. yeah just if it, tim's way uh, you'll it'll i'll turn up okay so. what a great perspective so thank you for sharing well thank you tim's for way me. perspectives good luck thank you for being sustainable all right thank you for having me and i'm linda marie cologne your host for making it artisan stories Yeah. Uh -huh.